guys, welcome back. It is me, Marquise G, and you're back for another episode of G's Gems, where we're talking everything career, reality, and motivation, and sprinkling in some gems along the way. You see, we got a, we're in the same place. It's just a little bit, you know, we're switching it up, trying to give y'all different vibes so it doesn't get boring, right? But we're still here in the Melly showroom. I still got Tyrus here with me. I don't know where you can see him at behind me. Can't see it? Okay, so it's okay. But he, you can hear him, though. You can hear him still. So we're back. Happy New Year, first of all. Happy New Year. We have made it to 2023. Woo, man. I don't know what happened in 2022. I feel like it was just like one long day. It was one entirely long day. It was a flash. It was a glimpse in the sky. I don't know, but we made it to 2023. I'm personally excited about 2023. Are you excited about 2023? <laughs> For the most part. I'm excited about 2023. I think it's going to be a really good year only because I feel like I'm going to be able to plan a lot better this year. I feel like I'm going to be able to plan a lot better this year. I feel like 2022 just happened to me. So I really am trying to do a lot better at planning in 2023, better time management for sure, Um, better boundaries, being able to say no to people. So this episode, we're just going to talk about um, goals, 2023 goals and how to plan for them, how to put some strategies behind them and things of that nature. Um, If you still don't know a lot about what I do, again, I have a business, G4 Unlimited. It started out as a speaking and coaching platform for me. And so when I started, one of the things that um, I started kind of teaching, I guess, one of the programs I had running was called GPS. And GPS stood for Goals, Plans, and Strategies. And so the whole concept behind it was, was that, you know, imagine, you know, taking a road trip or even if you, you know, fly somewhere or take a cruise, all of these ways of travel, of getting from one place to another, when you don't know where you're going, you use a GPS or a map or something that helps you get to this destination. So if you're trying to get from one place to another in your life and you've never been to this place that you're trying to go to in your life, why wouldn't you have a navigation system for that as well? So that was the concept behind the GPS program that I was running. So it was just really helping people to understand and understand their goals, how to make them more manageable, and how to really put actionable steps behind them as well. So that's really what it was all about. Um, So I guess a couple of my goals for 2023, like I said, would be planning. I think that for my business, I was kind of just putting myself out there really and just saying like, hey, um, if I don't do anything, no one's going to know what it is that I do. So I started off last year, I had my first event in March for International Women's Day, but I had no plan, good or bad, how I was gonna, you know, continue my business. You know, if it went well, this is what I'm gonna do. If it goes poorly, this is what I'm gonna do. I had no plan. I was just so laser focused on executing this one thing that I had no next step plan. So luckily it all went well. Um, I don't think I've told this story on here before, but essentially um, I have two mentors. Shout out to Starlin Lativa. Check out Create Connect Collab on Instagram, Google them, look up their website, all the things. Um, But they are two great ladies and um, I was a part of their community. I've been a part of their community for probably over a year now. And I was like, man, I just need some guidance and some direction. So we had a meeting. We were talking about some things I could do for the year. This is in January of 2022. It's almost a year ago. That's crazy. And they were like, oh, well, I was telling them about, you know, what I wanted to do, what I was trying to create for my business. And a lot of it was centered around just like building community, not necessarily specifically just for women, because I don't really like to section myself off to people. And I feel like everybody feels like just because you're a woman, you have to have a woman's group. Or just because you're a man, you have to have a men's group. And I just really didn't want to pigeonhole myself into a box like that. But they were like, we can start with that and then, you know, branch out from there. So they were like, oh, you should do something for International Women's Day. But they were like, oh, that's in March. It might be a little too fast. Me, I'm like, oh, if you say it's impossible, I'm about to make it possible. So I was like, well, we have 45 days to get this done. And for me, planning events, I feel like all the behind the scenes things don't actually take a long amount of time. So booking a venue, booking entertainment, finding a caterer, all these different things don't really take a long time. 
it's selling tickets. If you have a ticket in a bit, selling tickets is the hardest thing ever. Unless like you're like a big, you know, name or something like that. But even sometimes then it's really hard to sell tickets. So selling tickets is the hardest part of any event to me. So I literally had the event plan in maybe two days. I had both my co-hosts, I had my venue, I had my caterer, like all those things I had in maybe two days. It was selling the tickets for me. So I think the event was maybe like March 9th, March 10th, something like that. It was like the Sunday before International Women's Day. Mind you, when you're trying to break into an industry or something like that, you have to be aware of who's already doing those things. <laughs> And so this is when I found out there's already so many Women's Day things going on. So I was like, you know what? I still just got to try because there's a market for everybody, no matter what. There's a market for everybody. However, maybe like a week and a half, a week before the event, I had only sold three tickets. One of them was my mom. And so the goal was to sell, I think, like 40, 40 or 50, something like that, maybe. And I remember my mom asking me, like, what are you going to do? Like, are you going to cancel it? Blah, 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 blah. And in that moment, it was honestly the calmest I had ever been. When I started my business in 2020, the first event, the first thing I came out with was an event. And like, I sold like no tickets, like at all. And so this, but at that time I was like freaking out. I was panicking. I was scared. But this time when my mom asked, I wasn't scared. I wasn't panicking. I wasn't freaking out. Like I just had so much calm in my body. And I told her, I said, nothing in my spirit is telling me that I need to cancel this. And from the moment I said that and made that decision, tickets just started picking up like day after day after day. I had a couple of people sponsor tickets to where I think maybe like five or so people were able to come for free. I had so many sponsored gifts that everybody left the event with something else in some way, whether it was a gift card, a product, a service, a book, like something. And so that event just ended up going so well that after that, all my opportunities, not even just in the event space, but in the speaking space just started picking up and it really helped me to start branding myself and get myself out there. But because of that, I really just had to go with the flow. I really had to just take opportunities as they could. And by the grace of God, I mean, I'm not complaining at all because everything was word of mouth for sure. But next year or this year going into 2023, I want to be able to market myself in a different way. I want to be able to advertise and, you know, just really put myself out there in a different way instead of just letting things happen to me again. I'm definitely grateful for things as they come, but... Just now that I know what I'm capable of and what I actually want to do, I just want to be able to do that. So 2023 is going to be a lot of pre-planning and getting things done ahead of time. Okay, we're good? Okay, we fixed the mic. Okay, time management. So I also have a nine to five as well. We're going to hope and pray that 2023 is the last year for that. Keeping our fingers crossed. But 2023... Um, time management, I have to, have to, have to be on top of things. I think in 2022, the problem was I started a new job on Valentine's Day. My event was in March. So in the middle of getting adjusted to a new job, I'm also planning my first ever event ever. So it was just a lot of things happening at the same time. So I couldn't really focus on my new job, which was stressful because my work was building up. I'm trying to build my business over here. Don't really know what I'm doing, just flying by night. But And then I also have all these other responsibilities outside of this. So just trying to find the time to do my nine to five, work on my business from five to nine, fit in, sleep, going to the gym, drinking water, eating right, hanging out with my friends, spending time with my family, all these different things. It just becomes a lot. So I need to do a lot better at time management. Um, a good friend of ours, Josh, always talks about, you know, what are your routines? What is your daily schedule and all this stuff? And every time he asks me, I roll my eyes because it's not happening. But 2023 is going to happen. It's going to happen. I have to be more disciplined and more consistent with my time. I think in 2022, I tried like a rough routine schedule type situation. I think for me, the biggest thing is sleep. Like I love sleep. 
And there are a lot of people I come across who can function off like minimal sleep, like four or five hours of sleep. I have to have a full eight hours of sleep every single day in order to function. And if I don't, I'm going to need a nap during the day. But by the time I can take a nap, like the day is over. So there's just no point. But I need to do better at getting up at a decent hour when I'm at work, make sure I'm at work focused, not being distracted by phone calls or, you know, Instagram, social media, whatever the case may be, and just time blocking. And also realizing that I can only get to what I can get to. If somebody comes with me, it comes to me with something during the day, if I can't address it immediately, I hear what you're saying, but we're gonna have to follow up on this tomorrow. So, and that leads into the boundaries piece that I talked about that I mentioned. Um, There were a lot of things where I was just kind of jumping to do things because I felt like I was going to miss an opportunity or because I didn't want to let somebody down or I don't know. It could have been a plethora of reasons why, but I have to do better at not feeling like I always have to jump and do and be present and all these different things because at the end of the day, it's draining to me. It's definitely draining to my gas tank. I don't even want to think about how much money I spent in gas in 2022. Like, it's absolutely ridiculous, especially with how high gas prices were. I know I spent, we're not even going to talk about it. But yeah, it's definitely just, it's draining time-wise. It's draining, you know, capacity-wise. It's draining physically, mentally, emotionally, financially, all these different things. So putting boundaries on myself to be able to say, hey, this is what I can do. This is what I can offer. If it works for you, it works. If it doesn't, sorry, you're going to have to find somebody else. Because I really do feel like 2023 is going to be a game-changing year. I feel like 2022 was a game-changing year, but I think it was just like a glimpse of what's about to happen. I feel like it's just like we got to crack the door a little bit, but 2023, we're like busting the whole door open. So I think that's really why I'm really excited because I've set such a good foundation this year or in 2022 of what I can do, what I'm capable of. And now in 2023, I can go full force into it and really have control and say so over how I want things. Another goal of mine, buying a home. I have been thinking about this for over a year and now is the time. And I feel like I'm getting a lot closer to it, or really, really close. I feel like by like March is gonna happen. It has to happen (laughs) by March, it has to happen. I really, really wanna purchase a home. Um, I'm 26 now, I'm getting closer to 30. Which means nothing, absolutely nothing. But for me, it feels like, I don't know, I just feel like it's a new sense of freedom, independence, a new direction for me. Um, I've never lived by myself, ever. I lived with my parents up until I went to college. I lived in a dorm all four years. When I graduated from there, that's when I moved out of the country. I mean, technically I lived by myself then, but I lived in a hotel. It wasn't really like, you know... They did everything for me, basically. So I didn't really have to do a lot. And then when I moved back home, it was the pandemic. And I stayed with my parents for, you know, these two years up until now. So now it's just time to fly the coop, figure it out. It's like nerve wracking. And it's so much responsibility and so many things you have to think about and consider. But at the same time, like, I'm very excited. You just It's just a new, it's a new experience. I'm excited to see how having a routine is going to change from not really being able to, not that I can't do everything that I want in my parents' house, but you know, just when you live with people, it's hard to really do everything that you want. You know, you're still kind of like in a box and of course, respecting my parents and what they have going on and they kind of want things done a certain way. So you got to do it like this. So I'm excited to see how just functioning on my own terms, a hundred percent will really change things for me. I think that's pretty much a lot of my goals. Uh, new home, get out of my nine to five and have G4 running full full time. Um, yeah, just booking more, booking more gigs for sure so that I can have G4 full time. There's some other goals that I have, but we don't need to talk about them right now. Keep those in the hush hush for right now. 
Um, but yeah, those are my big goals for 2023. You have goals, Tyrus? Of course. Really the same as yours. Yeah. But if I could choose one word as a main goal for next year, it would be in- intentionality. Intentionality? Yeah. Just being intentional about what I do. Uh-huh. You know, where your intention goes, your attention flows. So it's important to be intentional about certain things. I think we let a lot of things just go by the sides or whatever. Mm -hmm. It's like, oh, well, whatever happens, happens. But if you're intentional about certain things, that's where the good things happen. Yeah. So if y'all don't know, Tyrus does a lot of things. Tyrus also has a nine to five, but he also is obviously an amazing creator of sorts. Again, like I say all the time, check out Everybody Somebody. Um, he's also a newly um, professed life coach as well in training. So if you had to be intentional, like the most intentional about one of those things, what do you feel like you want to be like the most intentional about? That's too big of a question. It is? Oh, my gosh. I, I think giving my all to all of it mm-hmm. and just being intentional about it what I say and not saying things that I don't mean or things that I can't commit to. Mm, Yeah. I think that's, yeah, just being intentional about what I say and what I put my my focus towards. So whether it be my job or everybody, somebody, or creating content for myself or others, Mm -hmm. doing the things that I actually say that I'm I'm going to do. Because, you know, a lot of times we just be talking. Yeah. But we don't actually put the intention behind the words that we actually say. Yeah. So doing everything that I say and meaning everything that I say on top of that. Yeah. Cause you know, sometimes we just be saying stuff that we don't even mean. It's like, yeah, bro, I got you. <laughs> and it's like three weeks later. You ain't got me. <laughs> like what happened? I said that for real. I tell people all the time, like, if I said something and you don't hear from me, like, relatively soon, please tell me again. Because it's not that I don't say things without intention. It's just I say so much with intention that I forget. So, and I feel like, for me, I feel like if something is important to me and I have to rely on somebody else, I'm going to hound you about it. So, I feel like if it's important to you and you need me, hound me about it. You know what I'm saying? Like, I would never be offended by that because I said I'm going to do it. So, I have to, you know, follow through and do it. But, you know, so we just get caught up in the script of life and just saying things in the moment. Mm-hmm. That's why I say I'd be intentional about what it is I say and also how I say it. Yeah. And just not saying things that we don't mean because we do that too much. Oh, yeah. Intention is a big word. And that's, I encourage you to stick with it because intention was actually one of my words for 2022. And that carrying that thread throughout the whole year changed everything for me. So if that's your word for 2023, I highly encourage you to stick with that word. And uh, for everybody, you know, watching it, find you a word that you can carry throughout the year. But also in 2022, what I started to do was I had a word for each month. So it was kind of like a compass for me in a way of this is what I really want to, even though intention was like my overarching word for the year, I put intention on a specific word every month. So like one month it was discipline. One month it was, um, man, I wish I had a picture of my vision board. One month it was discipline. One month it was um, patience. Like one month it was patience. One month it was wisdom. And I didn't really like have a way of coming up with them. It was just kind of like, If you're one of those people that are kind of like deep feelers or thinkers or kind of just really in tune with yourself, for me, it was like I would notice certain. It was some month where there were literally like the word was just given to me, like everything I read, watched, looked at. It would be this one word over and over again. So I would make it that my word. Sometimes I would just be sitting at my desk and a word would just pop in my head. And I'm like, okay, I'm gonna use that word. So don't feel like it's something like, oh, I got to flip through the dictionary and find a word for the month. Like kind of just let it flow naturally. Because again, once you have that intention and you're just becoming more aware of what's going on in your life, what's going on within inside of you, what's going on around you, you'll start to notice like these recurring themes or something like that. It's kind of like when they say um, with manifestation, when they say, um, 
if you say you want a pink Lamborghini or something like that, and you start thinking about it and saying it and writing it down so much, and eventually you'll start looking around and you'll see pink Lamborghinis everywhere. You know, certain things like that. I use that same kind of mentality with these words that I have every month. But every month I use those words and it was just kind of like my guiding thing to focus on, whether it was something I needed to work on within myself, something I needed to learn more about, um, something like that. So I highly encourage you to have a word for the year, but really try having a word every month to kind of keep you straight, keep you focused, keep you on point. So those are 2023 goals. Let me know what your goals are in the comments. Um it's going to be a really good year. Also, let us know what you think about, you know, the episodes and things thus far. I think another goal I'm going to try. We're going to see. We're going to figure it out. I don't know. Don't hold me to it. We're going to work it out. But a couple of people have asked. I haven't really officially said this is a podcast yet, but we're going to figure that out, too. But a couple of people have asked to come sit down somewhere. It's only me right now, but we might have some guests in the near future. I don't know. I've been sitting on it, thinking about it. So let me know what you think about having guests. If so, if there are any people locally in Indianapolis that you feel like would be great on here, let me know that in the comments too. But yeah, let's know. Let me know your goals. Let's hold each other accountable. Let's have a great 2023, great start to the year. And we'll see you next time. Bye.